I'm going to go through four examples of Nash equilibrium just to show you how to solve these quickly. And Nash equilibrium is a no regrets equilibrium, meaning after the dust is settled, after we've figured out what every player is doing, every player can look at what the other players have done and say, given what you did, I'm happy with my choice. I've made a best response to your best response. So here's how you approach these. Um, you start out thinking from player one's perspective. And that means you need to identify the payoffs in the table that are relevant to player one. And for the first stage here, you ignore the other payoffs. So only the purple payoffs matter here. This is a joke shop scenario where Fred and George are trying to decide, do I set my price higher or set my price low when I have the other brother as my competitor? So the trick here is from player one's perspective, you are going to check player two's strategies. In which case, Fred is going to think, if George sets his price high, well, I wish I would have set my price high and gotten the eight or set my price low and gotten the 20. And of course, Fred prefers the 20 more than the eight. Then he checks George's other strategy. He says, if George, my competitor, sets his price low, well, I prefer to have gotten the zero or the four. And I prefer the four. So we can see setting a low price is a dominant strategy for Fred, meaning no matter what George chooses, Fred will have wished he would have set his price low. Now we flip perspectives and we do the whole game through George's perspective, meaning we're only looking at George's payoffs. But we're going to check his competitor Fred's strategies. So George will say, if Fred, my competitor, chooses to set his price high, well, I wish I had the 10 or the 15 and I will prefer to have the 15. If Fred, my competitor, sets his price low, will I prefer to have the zero or the two? Well, I'd prefer to set my price low to get the two. In which case, any box that has two of these circles is going to be a box where both players can say, given what the other player chose, I'm happy with the choice I made. So this is a Nash equilibrium. All right, let's move over here to Pride and Prejudice, and this is from chapter six, the disagreement between Charlotte and Elizabeth. And they're talking about the strategies of a man and a woman, should the woman exaggerate her interest, and that is, of course, to get the man to pursue. So I think these payoffs are somewhat in line with the book. In any case, to solve this, we're going to start with player one's perspective, that's the woman's perspective. So we're looking at only the woman's payoffs, but we're going to check the man's strategies. So the woman is going to say, if the man chooses to pursue, will I wish I would have exaggerated and gotten the eight or wish I would have not exaggerated and gotten the 14? And she prefers the 14. If he doesn't pursue, she's going to wish she had gotten the zero rather than the negative two. And now we switch perspectives and we think from the man's perspective, looking at his payoffs, the man is going to say, if the woman exaggerates, well, I wish I would have gotten the 12 or the two. I will wish I would have gotten the 12. If the woman doesn't exaggerate, well, I wish I would have gotten the five or the one. I wish I would have gotten the five, in which case our Nash equilibrium is for the woman to not exaggerate and for the man to pursue. Our next example is a Quidditch example where the keeper or the goalie in Quidditch is trying to decide, do I anticipate left or do I anticipate right? And the chaser who is trying to get the ball in the goal is trying to decide, do I hit the ball right or do I hit the ball left? So first we think from the goalie's perspective, the keeper's perspective, and the keeper says, if, if the chaser went left, will I have preferred the eight or the one? Well, I would have preferred to go left to stop that ball. And if the chaser goes right, then I will prefer to have anticipated uh, right, which gives me a payoff of eight, rather than a payoff of three. And of course, then we flip perspectives and think from the chaser's perspective. The chaser says, if the keeper anticipates left, will I prefer to have gone left or right? Will I like the 10 better? And if the keeper anticipates right, will I prefer to have shot left or right? I prefer left. And therefore, we have no pure strategies Nash equilibrium in this game.
We are going to have a mixed strategies Nash equilibrium where the two players mix right and left with a certain percentage. And of course these payoffs are constructed based on the player's different propensities. If you're really good at kicking the ball at a really high uh, velocity going right but not so much left because maybe you're right-handed or whatever then that's going to change the payoffs in the table so uh, you can actually calculate the optimal strategy based on how often someone gets a ball through uh, through the hoop when going right versus left they do this and really good athletes actually um, end up at the perfect mixed strategies Nash equilibrium but that's beyond this video let's do the persuasion one persuasion is a book by Jane Austen and there are two characters Anne and Mr. Wentworth and they both kind of like each other and are hoping to run into each other when they go out on the town and they can choose either to go to the theater or the pump room really hoping to end up at the same place by happen chance. So we can look at Anne's payoffs, um, which are in purple, and say if Mr. Wentworth ends up choosing the theater, she will prefer the 10 over the 2. In other words, she will wish that she had gone to the theater. And if Mr. Wentworth chooses to go to the pump room, she will prefer the 8 over the 3, meaning she will wish she would have gone to the pump room. And then we switch perspectives and think from Mr. Wentworth's perspective, if Anne goes to the theater, he will prefer to have gone to the theater. He likes the eight better than the one. And if Anne ends up going to the pump room, he will prefer to have gone to the pump room. And therefore, we actually have two Nash equilibriums in this case. This is actually... Uh, a game called the battle of the sexes, but I think that's enough for this video. I hope you get a sense for how to solve Nash equilibrium problems. And the key here is anytime you have two of these circled, both players can say, given what the other player chose, I'm really happy with the choice I made.